Hello, everyone. My guest today is Matt Sweetwood. He's a serial entrepreneur with over 30 years of experience in tech startups as a tech startup founder. He's an international, internationally known professional speaker, author, coach, influencer. However, his greatest achievement is having raised five successful kiddos to adulthood as a single dad. He's a frequent national TV and publication contributor. Matt Sweetwood, you ready to take us to the top? I am. Let's go. Let's go. Fast, fast, right. fast. So, I was yeah. going to say, five kids and now insurance. So your company's called insurious.us. What's the business do? Um, we provide equipment insurance. It's simple as that. Think of uh, your most valuable equipment like camera equipment, audio visual equipment, um, you know, uh, anything that really is insurable and you take it out of the home. And what got you into this? Did you go on a trip to like Miami and broke your expensive camera and said there should be insurance for this? No, actually, I came from the photography business, ran a camera store for many years. And literally every single day, someone would walk into the store and say the stuff got stolen. I dropped it in the water. It got broken. Camera equipment is the most stolen item that there is because it's an item that you can't like put in your pocket like your cell phone. Think about it. You go out with your camera, you're on vacation, it gets put down. It's a bigger object. It's in a bag. It's just an, and it's very easily saleable on the street. So camera equipment, for example, I mean, we covered camera equipment, audio equipment, your laptop computer, all sorts of things like that. It's very easily stolen. It's damaged. And our, we offer a very, very fast access. You basically can get insured in between five, six minutes on our site. No, don't need to speak to anybody. Just go up there and it's very, relatively inexpensive. So what do people pay you on average to get insurance? Uh, they pay about $150, $160 a year for insurance. And it'll cover up to, let's say, five, $6,000. It's a little bit more if you cover more. We also have photographers that come on that have fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 worth of equipment or more. Interesting. Okay, so when did you launch? Um, we launched about five weeks ago. We actually launched the website. Took a couple of months, obviously, in uh, in development, but uh, we're we're all we're ready to go. We just began our marketing. Do you have your first couple customers? We do. We How do. So, um, it's a typical digital uh, marketing. You know, I also have a lot of connections inside the uh, photo industry, so I start asking around. You know, going to photographers, strong strong arming them a little bit. We're actually looking for influencers. You know, we want to have some really good photographers out there that talk it and, and do that thing. And we have an affiliate program. So, you know, that'll really help. We believe that'll be at the heart of how uh, the program gets promoted. So how many customers to, as of today? Uh, today, we have about 100. 100. Okay, that's great. So five weeks in, 100 customers, 14, but what is that, 1,400 bucks a month in MRR? Then? Yeah, something like that. Exactly. And so how do you model this out? So someone, let's say someone who paid you three months ago comes back in and says, my $800 camera got stolen. Do you have to pay that off directly? Um, no, actually, we're we're connected directly with uh, insurance company. The insurance company actually will process the claim for them, but it's paid directly from the insurance company. We're basically a facilitator. We're facilitating the purchase of the insurance. We facilitate the customer service and the outreach, and we sort of put the product together so that it fits the market. You know, you think about um, you know college students going off to school with their very fancy iMacs, you know, their laptops. You know, it's a very easy thing to insure and people want that kind of protection. No, it makes complete sense. So if I'm a, if I run a camera shop today, you come knocking on my door down there in Miami and say, Hey, I got insurance. I'd love for you to sell it. And I'm saying, Matt, what affiliate cut are you going to pay me? What's your response? Um, so they're going to make, it's a, a growing affiliate program. So they'll make, depending on the cost of the policy, they'll make a certain percentage of that. And then of course, um, you know, there'll be programs built in because stores typically have um, salespeople. So we'll be able to sort of create this uh, funnel effect, the funnel effect down. But once again, it depends on, you know, the volume and it depends on uh, the amount of policy sold and the dollar volume and so on. If I'm just getting started with you, what am I going to earn on the first policy I bring you? It's like 30%? You know, I'm like $10. Ten, okay, I think so you know, as a matter of fact, I think if you come on, if you just sign up for the program, you get uh, five or ten dollars, if I remember correctly. Just so all you have to do is sign up. Go to insurious.us, sign up. There'll be we we <laughs> we will put ten bucks right in your account. So you're paying a flat fee per account I sign up. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I see. And, but it grows. The more accounts you sign, that flat fee goes up, and you can collect up to I think fifteen dollars or twenty dollars a policy. You know, if you really start to promote the uh, promote the item. So we believe that'll be a really big way to get this out there. The amazing thing about this insurance is that it's most people think that their homeowners covers it or even their business and policies cover it. In most cases, it does not. And also our policy is a all peril policy. So, for example, 
uh, if you lose it, if it's stolen, if it gets water, it falls in water. If you have a hurricane, a tornado, an earthquake, terrorism, nuclear war, basically covers almost essentially every peril, almost every. Mm-hmm. This, this idea is not obviously a new one. You have a unique advantage in that you were in the trenches running a camera shop. So that's right. an advantage. But how are you, who, who are the big players in this space and how do you beat them? Um, well, you see, the, the way you beat them in this space is you provide the easiest access at the right price. So we have what we believe is the lowest cost policy and we have the easiest access. There's essentially no place you can go sign up and have a policy in about seven, eight minutes. Right. You don't have to speak to anybody. You just sign up basic information and you actually get the policy. So you can buy in that policy really fast. So mm-hmm. it's easy access and a very low cost and a very, very wide level of coverage. Those are our selling advantages. Talk to me about Hiscox Insurance. Uh, they're obviously a big player in this space. They're spending a crap ton on Facebook ads. How do you compare head to head against them? Um, in our case, we're offering a more specialized insurance. Once again, they're offering all sorts of different products, and it gets very confusing, and a lot of those will overlap with what you have. This is a very specific product, and as a result, the premium is going to be extremely low and extremely targeted. And once again, if you dig into their policies, you'll find that they don't cover some of the things that we cover. Interesting. Now, have you bootstrapped this company or have you raised um, we're just bootstrapping it for now. We're yeah. able to, the beauty of this product is that we're able to run it with a very, very small uh, staff. And, you know, we have, many? Tech, we have tech expertise. We're actually running with five people right now. That's incredible. How many engineers? Um, we actually have one, uh, we have one engineer and one outside. So really five and a half. I have an outside, there's one outside tech person. There's an inside tech person. I'm a tech person. Um, and we have t- there's three, three co-founders and, basically two other people working in the company. And we why did you need why did you need three co-founders? Why couldn't you just do it yourself 100 percent You know, I love that question. Um, so my expertise is in tech marketing and you know in the electronics and equipment industry. The other partner is an insurance person. He has 20 plus years in the insurance business. And the third partner actually runs a master broker agency. So mm-hmm. that's providing the sort of the customer service background. We're going to get very, very good customer service, very quick response and so on on this. I'm a very customer service oriented person. So it was a very natural mix of co-founders. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and did you guys decide to split it right down the middle? 30, 30, 30? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, all, we're all equal partners, but I have the yeah. loudest mouth. So uh. <laughs> I get my way more often. I like, <laughs> let's, let's put it this way. I like to think so. And are you all full time on this or is it still too early? Um, it's still, I mean, we, yeah, and essentially we are, I mean, I'm, I'm not full time on anything. I do 10 different things, no matter what, it's not going to matter. <laughs> you got, yeah, I'm full time, whatever. I put in enough, whatever time it takes to make this work. We're very excited about this because it's a very simple concept. It's a very excellent product and really nobody else has it out there. So yeah, how it should do really well. We're going to add on other insurance too, by the way, this is only sort of the first entry. We'll eventually expand the offerings and we're actually working on that right now. So, you know, what add, the next it, offering be? Um, I think the next offering will be some sort of larger policies, maybe on property or something like that. We're, we're experimenting around. We're seeing what's going to fit in. If you think about it, right, for example, maybe to be able to offer renter's insurance or be able to offer something related to that. Probably not like auto. That's not our, you know, that's not going to be our, uh, our our thing. Maybe Maybe liability insurance in there and so on. You can only strong arm your old photography friends that run shops for so long. How do you get customers moving forward and how many are you adding per month? Um, So I I can't really tell yet, right? Because we're just really, really a a month in. Um, It's just, I believe that once travel picks up, right? Because travel puts your equipment at risk, even business travel. We're going to reach out to the general population. Remember, think about the traveling executive. Think of yourself. You're flying around. You're carrying your laptop projector, whatever it is you carry around with you. My, my Lumix GH5 is always your Lumix GH5. Oh, I just put away my Lumix. I was going to take it out and, and show it right there. I mean, your Lumix GH5, right? I mean, you can insure that, and it's all under one policy. You can insure that. You can insure your laptop, your projector, and stuff like that. But you're not really at risk now. You're not traveling. COVID is going to drop obviously very quickly over the next couple of months. People will start traveling internet. I just read. Uh, yesterday that there's like they're expanding the list of countries you can't travel to but international travel and travel will take the general population and make that available to us because like i said camera equipment computer equipment 
audio, visual equipment, video equipment, all at very, very high risk. And we're basically saying, you know, 12 and a half bucks a month and you have it essentially covered. So this, we believe once biggest, travel gets up, we'll go to the general public. You're right. I can only, we can only get a certain amount of dealers. There's only a certain amount of camera stores and electronic stores left. And, but we'll go out to the general population. That's really the goal. Anytime someone is selling me on insurance on hardware, whether it's an Apple store executive when I buy my Mac or the, the camera shop that I bought, this Lumix CH5, the thought that always goes through my head is I get why it's important. It is so cheap. You're right. But I know that if I lose my camera, I'm not going to spend the hours to go figure out how to like take a picture or prove that I owned it or prove that there was damage to actually, and remember this, that I bought insurance from to actually go collect. And that's why I never purchased at all. How do you help buyers get over that hurdle? You know, that's an interesting, that's an interesting problem because I thought of that myself. Um, I think we're going to work hard on education up front. So I think that that's really solved up front. And we actually talked about storing that kind of information or helping the customers do that right at the point that they re- that they register, right? Because the point you go fill out the application, we're, we're balancing trying to get you insurance really fast and making you work, right? Because we make you work too hard. You just won't get the insurance. So I think that that's a problem that really needs to be solved. I think it's a really good point. And I think maybe we're going to do something at the point of sale. On the other hand, come on, man, right? To quote a famous philosopher, you got to keep your receipts, Right. You know, here's yeah, what I would there tell you. There is no way in hell. You sound like my mom now. I don't keep any receipts. I, I It's all digital. There's Do no I have receipts. to talk to your mom? <laughs> Apparently, I need to talk to your mom. There's no. people listening right now going, I'm the same as Nathan. I, do yeah. not, I would never keep receipts. Most people me. have a receipt because you get an online, at least in today's world, most of the time you get an email receipt. People do save those. Yeah, if you're going to buy at a retail place, a little more complicated. I'm anal retentive. So when I buy something expensive, you know, here's what I would say to you. It's probably because you're a rich guy and you don't really care that much about the value of the camera and you can afford to replace it. But let me tell you, I know a lot of photographers who make a living off of this who are, or, or weekend warriors or whatever, or have $20,000 worth of equipment. And if that equipment is lost, they are out of luck. They used to walk into my store all the time, literally in tears. Yeah. Right. Because they didn't do it. So if you can't afford it, you'll find the incentive to do it. Maybe for a guy like you, if you lose your GH5, you'll say, OK, I, I want the new model anyway. I'll go buy. I'll go buy the new model. So it's a little bit of um, part of this of the demand of the product. Your demand for it, your need for it is not quite as high as someone who can't afford to replace it or is yeah. in fear of losing. It. You're just not enough fear. That's really what it comes down to. Oh, I'm giving you my psychological analysis. You're just you not know, enough fear. You, you call me rich. You say I have no fear. I say you're right. Uh, and so right. you're, I mean, it is exactly accurate right now. Do, um, you know, do, do I wish there was a way where if I did lose something, I could quickly like push a button and get reimbursed for it? Yes. I'm just not convinced anything is that easy. Um, no, and you wouldn't want it to be that easy. Obviously, that wouldn't be a very say, good business you, model on our prevent, part. How do you prevent people like, okay, I have a receipt. I go into your flow. I bought it two years ago and I say, hey, my camera was just stolen. Here's my receipt. How do you get people to prove that it was actually lost or stolen? I mean, it depends on the nature of the loss or the theft, but there's usually some sort of proof required. Um, In many cases, I'll give you a little insight, right? So insurance companies keep very, very accurate records of people who make lots of claims. Mm. And if you're doing that, typically it's not the first time you've ever done that. And um, so in general, claims get paid. I mean, you know, if you're making a $50,000 claim, you know, you say you lost $50,000 worth of equipment. I mean, there's going to be a more investigation than if, you know, I lost my $800 camera. I mean, that's really just the nature of things. And if you've lost your $800 camera three times and you've made eight claims on your auto insurance and your tree keeps falling on your house and all of this stuff, I mean, they know who you are, right? Yeah. And we're, we're, do, we're doing that. In general, I mean, obviously insurance fraud is an issue. It is an issue, but we actually make claims very easy. Part of it is a numbers game, right? How many people, if you sell enough policies, this is how insurance companies work, right? There's a certain amount of fraud. There's a certain amount of whatever happens, happens, but you sell enough policies and premium is right and so on. So it works. What makes our thing so great is that the premium is so low, right? Because of the volume nature of the amount of policies we have to sell, we keep premium really low. You think about $150 a year to protect, you know, $5,000 worth of equipment. against essentially everything is pretty good. 
let's go. Let's let's expand this 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 good, some color on here for a second. You wrote a book, uh, Leader or Leading the Pack. When did you write Leader the of the Pack? Leader, Leader, Leader of the Pack. When did you yeah. when did you release it? Um, it was released about a year and a half ago. Okay, and how's it doing? How many copies sold? Um, I've sold probably ten thousand copies total. Is that good or bad? Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's a very harsh book. It's a book about how I was a humongous schmuck most of my life and how I overcame that and, and found success even being a big schmuck. It's a very painful story about raising children on their own after their mom left and a business which was in constant turmoil. And basically, it's about me suffering, making more stupid decisions, and then suffering some more and making more stupid decisions. And then finally, God waking me up and, you know, making the right decisions and pivoting my life. So what I'm most proud of is I literally once a week or sometimes more than once a week, get someone writing me say, I read your book and it changed my life. Thank you. I get, I get, it's an amazing calling card, by the way, because when I speak and I give out that book, people want me to coach them. They want me to consult them. So, and the book really helps people in terms of making money. I probably would have been better off working at Starbucks, nothing against Starbucks, but you get free healthcare. It's like, you know, $15 an hour. Did you work for the publisher? Um, I have a great publisher story. I had a publisher, had everything all lined up. Who was but it? Because, uh, it was, um, oh, I can't remember the name. It was a couple okay. of years ago. And I don't want to name them because it's not a good, it's not a good story. Okay. okay it's not, not a good story. Uh, we were about a year in getting ready to release the book. And they said, we're canceling your contract. And I said, Why? And they said, because the people in your book are that you're mentioning, the real people are going to sue you. So I went and had a legal review of the book. Uh, we changed a few things in the book to make it legally okay. Went Is back to the publisher and they're like, we're too, scared. we're too scared. Was this your ex-wife? Yeah. I mean, it talks, yeah. About, it talks about a bunch of people in the book. The book is like... And I said to him, I said, first of all, it went through legal review. And second of all, the best defense against libel is the truth. And I've told 100% the truth in that book. They're like, no, we're going to pass. But I will tell you that self-publishing was very, very good for me because I'm a marketer. So for me, I'm marketing the book and I keep all the profit. Well, I keep, well, Amazon keeps all the profits. But, um, you know, it's been really good for me. As a matter of fact, I just updated the book. I just came out with my third edition and a hardcover. Did it all myself, right? Because you said, "Am I full time at Insurious?" Well, yeah, I'm full time, but you know, at night I fix my book and yeah, did that. that. So I, I really like the book. For me, is a really excellent vehicle to help other people, and I'm most proud of that. Like I said, read the reviews. I have 145 star reviews. People saying it changed my life, it improved this. I can't believe it. This all you, you'll see if you go look at right, the reviews. Matt, we're out of time. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, besides your own, what's your favorite business book? My is a relentless by Tim Grover. That's my favorite book. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? I always follow Elon Musk for humor yeah. and for inspiration. <laughs> Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building insurious? Um, favorite online tool actually is WordPress. Love WordPress. Very Number flexible, four. easy to build the platform and work it, work it, work it. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Hours of sleep. My Fitbit tells me that I sleep five hours and... 45 minutes on average every night. Pretty good. Now, situation, uh, it sounds like you're not married today with five kids? No, I, I, I am. I am. Remarried. Uh, I am. Remarried, yes. Remarried, five kiddos, and how old are you? I am 57 years old. L last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Um, I wish, I, I actually wish I didn't get married to my first, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish I actually didn't have kids so young. This is a stupid wish because I'm now... 50 and free. Um, but I wish I traveled more. I, I didn't. I went, I graduated school early, went to graduate school, did all that stuff. I didn't do any traveling when I was young and didn't party and stuff like that. So Got to do it I, now. Insurious.us. It really is a SaaS play here, right? They're just, they're yeah. not selling software. They're selling an insurance plan for photographers to cover their cameras. A hundred folks signed up so far at about $14 an average per month. So about $1,400 per month in revenue, three co-founders, 33% split down the middle, five people total working on the business. Matt leading the way. Matt, thanks for taking us to the top. Yeah, thanks for having me. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.